the the conference has had a amazing attendance so it's really nice that people are really showing up okay if it's virtually rather than physically but it's really nice to have you guys coming to these these talks and giving us an opportunity to reach out and speak with you so we're here today to talk about the common services and we say it's opportunities for usage and integration so this is mainly because we have common services which are actually in the EOS catalog and you can actually gain access to here and now so they're off the shelf and usable so that's usage you can actually really pick them up and start using them you can contact us and do that but there's also a lot of integration work and that's one of the themes we want to actually try to show you today as well that as services join the EOS it's an ecosystem of services and there's added benefit from joining the EOS we link the services in together we look for common usage patterns we see what the community say to us that they need and we move on with that and we look towards these integration activities to provide added value. We actually go behind the scenes and we link these services in together to actually cover these common use cases. Um, the overview of the session, really we will have three distinct um, thematic areas with two talks each. So we will talk about the distributed computing and the orchestration services that allow access to this distributed computing infrastructure. And then we'll have a discussion round, maybe a couple of questions, depending on the time. And then moving on to the advanced data services. So foundational fur data services. So this is looking for data services that look at data, metadata, and also fur data services, findable data, etc. And we'll look at what we've done in this area. There'll be two talks there. Again, followed by a set of questions. And then advanced data services. So these are two fairly distinct services, so long-term data preservation and sensitive data services. These are both things which are in the cat catalog now, in the marketplace you can use. We want to expose them to you see, so you can actually see how they're evolving, etc. And then a little summary and outlook. Um, it's worth pointing out that if you look at the agenda on the web page, you will see the link to Slido. So this is where we'd like to capture your questions. So we've said at the end of each of these double talk sessions, these thematic areas, we'd like to look at the top questions. If you click on the link to Slido from the agenda, then you can post your questions there and you can also vote for questions. So if you see something where you feel, ah, that's exactly what I wanted to ask, then feel free to click on the thumbs up and upvote this question. And that's what we'll try to address at the end of the talks. Okay, so following that, I think we're covered for the, the brief introduction. And now we should move on to the distributed computing and the orchestration services. So Enol can now take over and um, give you a talk about the distributed computing and then Miguel will come on and then talk about the orchestration services. And as I said, thematically linked, then we'll have some questions based on these at the end of their talks. So Enol, if you can share your screen, then you should be free to go. Okay, so I hope you can hear me well and see the slides. Uh, thank you, John, for the introduction. I'm Manuel Fernandez working for the EI Foundation, and I will talk a bit about the Fidelity Compute Services that we have included in the EOS Hub uh, project. Uh, the objective of these Federated Compute Services is mainly to provide the EOS users with a distributed computing infrastructure to execute the workloads. We do that uh, in different kinds of instructions, so you can run your workloads in different kinds of computing resources and, and, and computing types. And for those, we have uh, a set of services involved in this big task of federated compute, which are listed here. So the EGI Cloud Compute, EGI Cloud Container Compute, the Indigo Advanced Infrastructure Service, which is mo mostly a docker tool, EGI High Throughput Compute and the EGI Workload Manager. I have a table here that tries to summarize the different characteristics of the main uh, services delivering compute capacity to the EOS Hub. And these are EGI Cloud Compute, Cloud Container Compute, and High Throughput Compute. And basically, you run different things on each of these services. In the EGI Cloud Compute, this is a distributed infrastructure as a service where you run VMs. That's a virtual machine where you decide what operating system and what software to run and how to run it. You are completely on control of the resources and you decide how, how to deal with that. So it's really powerful and allows you to do very custom um, setups, although it 
it's also a bit complex because you become an administrator of a, a virtual machine. So you need to really take care about all the details that uh, running a virtual machine uh, brings. Then we have the EGI Cloud Container Compute, which is about running Docker containers on, on top of this cloud infrastructure. Normally, you can run a Docker container as a standalone thingy, as a single binary, but uh, the usual thing is to run several of those containers together in a kind of synchronized orchestrated way. And there you have the container orchestration si system. In the case of EGI Cloud Container Compute, we use Kubernetes, which is an industry standard that uh, basically everyone in the, in the cloud area is supporting. Uh, it, it's quite complex to set up, but in the EGI Cloud Container Compute, what we provide to you is just a ready to use a deployment of Kubernetes where you can just run your applications. Um, still the complexity of Kubernetes is, is there and it has a steep learning curve. So sometimes users are a bit, uh, a bit um, afraid of this, but we can help you to get started with all this, this kind of uh, setup and, and, and rollout. And then we have the EGI high throughput compute, which is about executing jobs. Jobs are basically um, a clearly defined executable with some inputs and some output limited in time that it can execute it to a batch system and you get the results when one is over. This is ideal for, for this kind of problems that you can divide in independent chunks and you can submit a job for each of these chunks of the, of the problem. The good thing is that you don't need to manage any kind of resources. So it's not like the VMs or the Docker containers where you are aware of the underlying the resources. You just submit jobs and let the system come back to you when, when they are over. Uh, <clears throat> but you need to adapt your application if your application is not written or, or developing this kind of job model you have to port the application. And, and we have some legacy interfaces that may not be that easy to use uh, from, from some, some system. In, in any way, it, it removes all the burden of managing the, the infrastructure, which is quite nice for, for most of the users. In this slide, and the next one, yeah, I have the same services putting all together and how they relate to each other. So we'll start with the EGI cloud compute here. This cloud here is where you can run virtual machines. On top of the EGI cloud, you can start the Kubernetes that is the EGI cloud container compute. So this service runs on top of, of the EGI cloud compute. Then we have here on the right, the EGI uh, high throughput compute, which is this big batch submission uh, for your jobs to be executed. And there you submit the jobs and especially you can have uDocker jobs that allows you to run any Docker executable or any Docker container, I should say, in, into, into one of these jobs. And then we have a set of um, um, tools that allows you to better use um, these three services I was using. The main one is the EGI Workload Manager. The main one included in, in this task of the Federated Compute Service is the EGI Workload Manager that is able to distribute jobs on the EGI Cloud Compute and the EGI High Throughput Compute, depending on your needs and, 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 and the resources that you have available. But we have also other uh, services that are able to interact with the ones included here in this task, oh, sorry, which is the EOS Hub Cloud Orchestration that you will hear about uh, in the next presentation. So this, these services are able to manage resources that are uh, provided by the EI Cloud Compute. And of course, you can access data uh, of, that are hosted in external services like V2Drop, one data and others that you will also hear later on in, the, in this session. Uh, and all of these integrate with the federation services of the EOS Hub, so the AI, the accounting and monitoring, etc. So moving on to the distributed computing infrastructure that powers this EGI cloud. Uh, here I have a map of the different providers all across Europe. There are 22 of those offering infrastructure as a service, uh, mostly to support running your workload near the data. So if the data is located in Poland, the normal thing would be to go to the Polish uh, provider to, to run your computation. On top of this, 
infrastructure as a service, we are federated identity, we have a common virtual machine image catalog, we can offer both a graphical user interface and command line access, we support orchestration, and we have central accounting and monitoring. This infrastructure has been supporting the EOS Hub's computing needs since the very beginning of the project. Here you can see a, um, a screenshot of the accounting portal of the last year, so from January 2019 to January 2020. And over that period, we have delivered 7.8 million CPU hours and uh, 4,200 VMs have been created. And we are doing this for, for several communities. So the main ones that we are supporting in EOS Hub are the thematic service. So you have a list there, Doda, Sios, OpenCos, VNMR, EOP, Pillar and LifeWatch. We are also supporting some of the competence centers like Fusion, Episorpheus, Icecard 3D. And we are also involved in the <clears throat> digital innovation hub and business oriented activities. So we are have a list there of, of uh, different pilots that have been supported in, in this infrastructure. And now with the early adopter pilots, there is some projects that are coming to the ES hub. Uh, that started in, in late 2019 and, and, and some others in, in this year, in 2020. They are also um, being consumers of this infrastructure of the EGI cloud. Uh, this is not just for these big communities. Any user, regardless of how small their community or even individual people can request the access. So I invite everyone that is interested in, in testing this kind of service or using it them for production to go to the EOSC marketplace and order that and we will guide you through all the process to getting access and, and starting using it. Um, during this 2019, so the last year, I have uh, two slides that are a bit dense with uh, the achievements in, in this year. So I will start with the, which with I believe is the main one, which is the complete integration with the federated AI. Now all of the services I, I have been mentioning are uh, accessible through through OpenID Connect or uh, or some form of token translation service, namely RCL. And that's uh, available either via graphical user interface and via command line or API access. So every service listed here can work with the federated AI. That's, I would say that's the main achievement uh, over the last year. And then for the different services, I have a list of uh, main points delivered there. So for the cloud container computer, we have updated uh, the Kubernetes support for, for one of the latest versions, so 1.16 and beyond. We have uh, adopted uh, more and more Kubernetes features, so GPUs, the, the container network, uh, ingress, NFS storage. So all of these features that are coming to Kubernetes uh, or are contributed by external people, we try to bring them in as soon as possible. And we have done that uh, over the last year. For the cloud compute, there has been a lot of, uh, of work dealing with the AppDB, which is our graphical user interface, where we have uh, improved uh, the, the support for providers running OpenStack. We have improved the security with uh, SECAN integration, which is uh, a tool that allows you to uh, to detect vulnerabilities on the images that are published in the in the cloud, uh, we have um, reviewed the federation model of the EE cloud to to make it more attractive for new providers, making it lighter, and avoiding privilege access to 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 whatever the provider is. We have uh, improved accounting and monitoring with new types of accounting records and better monitoring to detect failures before. Uh, the users uh, suffer them. And we have also improved the, the information discovery using the GLUE schema, which is in a standard of the OEF, uh, and using the Argo messaging system for, for delivering this information. Uh, in the UDocker side, we have improved the OCI compatibility. So now it's uh, easier to run uh, containers that follow that, that standard, which is the, the main standard of Docker. Um, images. We have now support for GPUs, we have support for ARM and other minor general improvements like Python 3 support and, and compatibility with different systems that can be found in the in the computing uh, systems of the of the EOS hub. Uh, 
And in the uh, workload manager, we have uh, better multi-course job support uh, and, and enhanced packaging of uh, direct binary dependencies. So it's easier to, to, to use this uh, workload manager and we have better support for, for complex uh, workflow management. So that's my last slide. And now I think it's time for Miguel to, to go with the orchestration. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, I think that you are, you can, you can see my, my screen. Uh, this presentation will uh, summarize the development carried out in the TAC Silver 3. Uh, toward the uh, achieving uh, common services for cloud orchestration. But uh, we are focusing mainly on services that can be directly employed by the user, not in the internal components. Uh, mainly, we will, will show three services that are the path orchestrator, the infrastructure manager, and the feature gateway. Uh, for each component, uh, I will make a, a, a brief summary of the service. And uh, there are, but I will focus on the integration in the effort that we, we have made in this task in order to uh, integrate with other EOS Hub components. Uh, this task, uh, as I installed, uh, is focused on the orchestration services on top of uh, uh, cloud compute and cloud container services. Uh, these services allow to build uh, complex virtual compute infrastructures. It is based on, on Tosca in the Oasis Tosca standard. It uses a high level graphical interfaces and it enables the automatic selection of cloud provider. It's based on, on, on some information or the static information about the provider, monitoring information, and the available SLAs between the user and the provider. It supports a light range of cloud provider. Uh, we are focused on, you know, on your hub cloud compute service, but we also support another cloud provider, as any other open stack type, or open nebula, closed stack, but also uh, we are able to access the public cloud providers, as Amazon, Google Cloud, Azure, Scale, and et cetera. We, have, we are, have been focused on the optimization in order to speed up the, the deployment of virtual appliances. Uh, this is the main architecture of the orchestration layer. The entry point is the feature gateway that has been developed in order to build science gateways. Then the main, uh, the main component orchestrator that enables to choose the best uh, cloud provider. Internally, we have uh, four services. Three of them are uh, made to, to gather information about the, the system, the CMDB, gather information and the, the static information. The SLAM component get information about the, it enables to manage the SLA information and how to get information about the, the SLA. And finally, Fabix is used for monitoring purposes. And finally, the um, cloud provider ranking component gets all this information, I have a ranking of the providers where the uh, orchestrator will deploy the infrastructure. And finally, the infrastructure manager, that is the component that gets the request of the orchestrator to finally deploy and configure the, the virtual machines on the different cloud providers. Uh, in the last year, uh, the our main effort has been integrated with, with other services, mainly with EGI services. Uh, we have been integrating with EGI Chicken. Uh, we have been integrating with EGI Cloud Compute in order to enable to deploy virtual machines in, in top of the federated uh, infrastructure, but also with the EGI information system, which is the APPDB and Cloud Info Provider. Uh, it enables uh, the, the, the easy access to information to the user in order to select the available sites and the images that are available for, for the user. 
and all the improvements that have been, uh, some of the improvements have been requested by some uh, communities, Saria, Dodas, or Elixir Italy. Uh, the first component is the feature gateway. As I said, it is one of the possible entry points to the to the prestation layer. It has a, a, a front end that is accessible by means of a REST API. It, it has an extensible backup that supports different uh, distributed computing infrastructures, such as read, cloud, or high performance computing. And it, has, uh, it was uh, successfully used with different end user applications, for example, a web portal, but also a mobile application or a scientific work. As an example, you can access this web page, that is the EGI science software on demand, that has been uh, deployed on top of a feature gateway framework. The second component, that is the path orchestrator, that is the, the core component of the orchestration layer. It enables, it has two main uh, functionalities. One of them is to deploy virtualized computing and storage research. In this case, interact with the infrastructure manager that finally deploys these uh, infrastructures. But also it enables to deploy uh, dockerized services and jobs on top of a uh, message class. In this case, it interacts directly with the message framework, in particular with a uh, marathon and query. In both cases, the requirements are described using uh, the Tosca YAML standard. And the path orchestrator provides functionality uh, to uh, advance acceleration and scheduling capabilities. It enables uh, a transparent access to different uh, cloud environments, but it also enables the selection of the best uh, resource providers based on different criteria like uh, SLAs available, service availability, data location, et cetera. Uh, the Pass Orchestrator has different client tools. It implements a, a, a RESTful API. It has a, a command line tool that is called Orkent. Uh, it also has its own web interface, uh, that is the orchestration dashboard. And it has been included in the EOSC portal, so you can access this link that is shown in the slide in order to get more information and to request access to the, to the component. Uh, finally, the infrastructure manager, the service that finally deploys the virtual infrastructure on top of cloud resources. It can use uh, RADL or Tosca language. Uh, the, uh, RADL is a language, the, the native language of the infrastructure manager, but it also supports the Tosca standard. It, uh, it uh, supports this infrastructure as a code parallel in order to deploy infrastructure. The IEM is in charge of automating the deployment, configuration, monitoring, and update of uh, the, the virtual infrastructure. As I said, it supports, it supports a wide range of cloud providers, not only EGI cloud compute, that is all the, our main focus of this task, but also on the open stack sites and the uh, other public cloud providers. It features uh, DevOps capabilities. It is based on Ansible in order to enable the users to specify a set of types in order to configure their infrastructure. And the IEM works as a service and offers several interfaces. It's a uh, different XML RPC and REST APIs a command line application, and it has two different web-based uh, graphical interfaces. In particular, uh, we have uh, deployed two publicly available web interfaces. The first one is, a, is uh, an evolution of the orchestrator dashboard that has been adopted for the infrastructure manager. It is uh, for not advanced users. It is only focused to deploy on top of EGI code computer resources. It's an easy way to deploy virtual machines without any knowledge of the uh, physical infrastructure. And the second interface is called uh, the IEM portal that it enables to access all the functionality of the infrastructure manager. It also enables to deploy in different cloud providers, as public cloud providers. It enables to deploy your own uh, uh, Tosca or other documents, and etc. It also has been included in the EOS portal, and you have here the link in order to access and to get information or, or request access to, to it. 
Uh, finally, we saw a short summary of uh, the major achievements of the last year. In the case of IM, has been integration with Egitkin and with uh, Egi AppDB in order to get information about sites and images in order to make easier this process for the user. In the orchestrator has uh, added the functionality to uh, dynamically import the Tosca custom sites has been requested by the Dollars community. It has been integrated with uh, HasiCorp Vault for secret management, has been requested by Elixir. It has been enhanced the integration with Infrastructure Manager in order to retrieve the contextualization log and get the uh, more details. And it also has been improved the retry mechanism in order to address the planning fail. So in case that one site is, fail is failing to launch the VM, the orchestrator will select the next available cloud provider in order to retry the launch of the connection. And it has been improved the client tools, the, the client tools at the, the org end, and also has been created new dashboard uh, that has been requested by the dollar and electric community. Finally, the feature gateway has been focused in order to run the service as a, a, a set of Docker containers in order to run on top of a Docker Compose or a Kubernetes platform. And this, this is my last slide. So, um, I know if you, John, you can. Yeah, okay, so, um, okay, super, Sarah. So we, we have two questions. So I don't know if we can um, let the person ask the question themselves. Can they be um, unmuted or? Yes, yes, uh, they can be unmuted. Okay, I will do that. Since we, we have a few minutes, we're doing quite okay with the, the schedule. Yes. Uh, Sean, you can speak, I think. No, yeah, uh, so very Quick question. I know you've been providing these services. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, and I know NL showed a graph which showed an increasing uptake of the services. Have you done any user satisfaction surveys that you'd be willing to share with the community? And how do you use the, any feedback you get to improve your services? Yeah. So. So we are following the the FITSM standard, and 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 that uh, kind of forces us to to do satisfaction service for all the services that we have in EGI. So every year we do a, an interview with the communities, try to understand what's been going on, if they like what they get or if they don't. Uh, but those are internal; they are not public. And if there are any complaints, we capture those um uh complaints or, or suggestions for improvement and we need to to tackle them uh, somehow in the uh, within the gi so yes we we are doing that um but uh, i well for sure right now i cannot share anything because i, I would need to, to check in the internal uh documentation what we we have uh maybe we can we can we can do the exercise of check checking what can be shared and what can be uh, useful for other communities or other infrastructure providers as well. Yeah, I think it's a nice question to actually chase up in the back end, see what mm -hmm. we can open up. So we do actually talk with people also within the, the project itself, but it is nice if we can expose the feedback from other communities, etc. as well. It's a good point, John. Okay, so the, the next question, if we can unmute. Yes, Ignacio, you can speak to. Uh, do you hear me? Okay, so um, my question is related to compute container service. So uh, I'm asking, I know if it is a multi tenant service, and if so, how do you manage the authorization? If you have namespace created on demand, basically what it says is out there. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's not the multi tenant deployment of Kubernetes. We do a deployment, an independent deployment for every uh, user or community. Uh, Kubernetes is not uh, properly designed to do multi-tenancy, so we are not trying to, to do anything fancy there. Okay. 
Okay. Happy, Ignacio? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, well, there are, there are some possibilities. Uh, we, we have checked to use CGI chicken with some plugins to automatically create namespace and service accounts on the on the fly when the user connected. And we have some degree of isolation. And I was asking just if other people have tried the similar experiences. Thanks. Okay, so um, we're doing mainly okay on the the time frame. So now we'll. Slightly, just so, sh slightly shift and move towards the more data oriented subjects. So again, thematically shared, we'll have two talks. And then after these talks, we'll have a set of questions. We should be able to spare a few minutes. So first up is um, Heinrich Riedmann. Cover the fur data services. Heinrich, can you share screen and? Yes. Can you see my screen? I can see you, but not your presentation yet. Okay. Sure again. And now? Yes, but it's for me at least, it's, um, I see yes, it's a not small centered. fraction of your presentation. Yes. It's like a zoom function is activated. I don't know. Eric, do you want me to share your slides? Just a moment. Oh, yep. now, yes. Yep. Oh, no, Cyrus. Yes, because there is a sharing of screens here. So Sarah can try share again. Uh, try because... again. What's now? Yes. yes. Now yes. Okay. Good. So thanks. Okay. Super. Good. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Heinrich Wiedmann from the German Climate Computing Center in Hamburg, Germany, and I present the task for the area data discovery and access. So I focus here in this presentation on development and integration activities. Uh, and efforts carried out within and beyond task data discovery and access. So more or less the mo main goal is to establish a common data discovery and access layer. So which is based on uh, or to allow fair data management. And uh, I briefly uh, present the services involved here. So mainly services in this context for searching, accessing, storing, transferring, and sharing data. So as said, to uh, achieve the objectives of the task, uh, the integration here follows the FAIR principles and open data policy guidelines. So in order to allow the end users to discover distributed data resources, not only within the EOC, EOC hub scope, but as well beyond, and provide adapted solutions for transparent access, storage, exchanging, and transferring of data. So, this integration activities includes uh, a lot of work. So, of course, in some enhancement and extensions of interruptions of the services itself and then we developed uh, user-friendly interfaces to enable common usage and uh, uh, for the in the main goal so at the end we want to apply this to use case for use cases and thematic services and herefore we have often to adapt the services and to, to the particular requirements. Okay, here's a list of the service portfolio of the task. So the services are from the which were from the beginning available here. So very shortly, uh, you will be defined as an interdisciplinary discovery service. Uh, GA Data Hub is a federate. So storage service 
on a, uh, for large amounts of data on a global scale. In that B2 stage, this is a suite of service. This is aimed to, uh, to uh, simplify transfer of data between data nodes. EU that B2Drop is a synchronous is a service for synchronization and sharing of data across multiple devices. So additionally uh, to this uh, services to the common service of this task, we have as well integration activities with, uh, ta with services from other tasks. I will show you in a minute. And of course, we use uh, a lot of support and federation services. For example, of course, AI tools are very important for data access. For more details, I refer here again to the marketplace of the UC portal, where the, these services are described in detail. So, uh, in this diagram, I show a typical fair data discovery and access workflow. So typically a researcher first search for data interesting for her uh, or his uh, research or study or project. And after she hopefully found some data, of course, the access to the data should be transparent and seamless. And then often you want to share the found data and you're thinking uh, with uh, other people and so uh, interoperable, entity, uh, interoperable sharing possibilities, opportunities should be there. And finally, the data often reused and if there's a process and analyzed. And at the end, often your results, you will, you will publish your results again, and then may more or less the data cycle begins from the beginning, just make your results discoverable and so on. So I, at, in this figure, you see already the, put the icons of the several services, but this uh, to, build really an architecture and uh, that you can really apply this co the common services. We have here to integrate the services. And this is more technical figure here, where the integration, the pairwise integration is shown. I list here only a few examples. So the, uh, we manage to index data resources uh, stored in the EGA Data Hub, federated storage in B2 find to make them discoverable. So for there we developed the uh, web interfaces between uh, B2 drop and B2 stage. This optimizes uh, data exchange and sharing. Uh, the integration of B2 stage and EGA Data Hub is done. So this uh, makes retrieving of data easier and is the first step for data transfer between storage devices. And as said, a lot of AI tools are used for data access. And uh, for example, the Indigo IIM tool is used and as well gateway to access to authorize and authenticate people for data access. But as well, we have integration activities with services from other tasks, especially from the area or task data and metadata management. And Kele will more go in detail, present this task in some minutes. Uh, so again, list two of this, uh, uh, two examples of these integrations. So we, this, we um, achieved or uh, established the possibility of data transfer between the two big preservation uh, storage storage services of EGI and uh, UNAT. So this is between EGA Data Hub and B2 Safe. And we have uh, established an interface 
uh, developed an interface between B2Stage and B2Share, which makes the staging of uh, documents and data uh, stored in B2Share uh, to, uh, for example, to processing uh, platforms via B2Stage possible. And uh, so, and the other uh, uh, direction or the other point is that we worked for us together with other work packages, for example, with the work package for the rated services, because as said, we use here the, for example, AI tools to, uh, which to ensure transparent and seamless data access. Okay, and as said, uh, so the final goal is to apply this common services in use case and semantic services. I list here only just three examples of semantic services which use services of this uh, task. So it stored us. Uh, this is a, a suite of services for on-demand analysis. And here is uh, for Belong other services, Indigo, Identify, Authorization, Management Tool used for uh, data access, and so that you can use here the federated authentication mechanisms coming with this service. <coughs> Herbadrop is a huge archive of Herbaria, and they try to migrate uh, their digitation infrastructure to UDAT, so use the B2 service of UDAT. So once one thing is here that we uh, harvest or that we to find, UDAT we to find harvest metadata from Herbert Ops data resources with, which are stored uh, in, in this uh, B2 save uh, storage service and make them so discoverable. Last, uh, we have here the ECAS, the Matic service ECAS. So this is a service for analysis of climate on climate data, especially for the Earth Modelers Network community. And here we have a bridge, built a bridge to be to drop so that uh, that end users can use it to drop storage, so so they can use it as shared storage, so to, to share and exchange data results from the processing, for example, with other colleagues, but as well a private uh, storage space if they won't, won't uh, publish their results yet. Okay. This brings me to the last slide. So the main effort in 2019, the last year, was in this task. So from the beginning already, so we had to bring together the services of UDAT, the so-called B2 service, this stem from the EGI, European Grid Initiative, and the other big, huge data infrastructure project, the Indigo. Indigo Data Cloud, and so, and for example, the, yes, first we have to uh, to consider the different backgrounds and bring the people together, and so, but and plus to integrate and use all the support services was a big challenge, but meanwhile we uh, had a lot of achievements. I, just the next two bullets are two of the major achievements. So we enhance discoverability of distributed data via B2Find in a lot of with a lot of projects and integrations of data providers and communities. And the big uh, achievement was the establishment of the data transfer between people safe and each data hub as already mentioned and as as, as well described uh, we implemented uh, 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 applied 
and or, or this integration of services are used in several use cases and semantic services. What I didn't mention until now, we, we EOC has a collaboration with cooperation with open air. So for example, within this uh, cooperation, uh, we build a harvest bridge to be to find. That means that as well open air can again harvest the metadata from B to find and open air can apply their uh, services, metadata check and so services and so on on the B to find metadata, which would will improve the quality of the metadata catalog. And there's a, a concept of integration of the annotation service, B2Node, in B2Find. So this would be enable end users to annotate data sets in B2Find, for example, with ontologies. So B2Node is already integrated in B2Share. And we want to go ahead to integrate this as well in B2Find. Okay, this brings me to the end. Okay, then I, yep. Then if uh, Mikhail is ready, then we can move straight on to the I, second part of the thematic talks and the data session. It's okay for me, I can share the screen. And that's okay, and then we can, as I said, cover questions later. Any questions, feel free, just ask them by Slido and we'll cover them as we reach this. The, end of the, the double pack of talks. Okay, are you able to see the slide? Okay. Yep. Okay, I now am Michele Carpene. I'm going to introduce you services for data and metadata management. Okay, basically <clears throat> uh, what we aim to do uh, in, with this task that I'm leading is uh, um, to provide the user uh, with the ability to manage and use search data in a fair way uh, so following basically a uh, fair principle, the user will be able to uh, search for distributed data in EOSCAB and beyond uh, to have seamless access to distributed data resources where for seamless access, well, I mean uh, the user are able to assess uh, resources and services within the federation, uh, providing their own credential uh, previously obtained by some uh, identity provider or 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 agent IDP or site uh, without registering twice, so they are able to to assess all the services in the federation seamlessly. Uh, interoperability in the, in the mean that uh, the users are able to share and publish uh, research output following open standard and agnostic tools interface and reuse in, uh, regarding the staging and staging data. Um, so, in, in general, OSCAP we support the end user um, regarding seamless access, uh, finding, localizing, transferring, and reusing data resources for scientific purposes. I give you a briefly uh, service panoramic of the main services for data metadata management. Uh, we have currently B2Safe, which in particular I lead um, regarding the development. Uh, and uh, um, currently we work together with uh, um, some other partner and uh, uh, engineer, software engineer in order to provide functionalities. Uh, the, um, the B2Safe service basically uh, offers functionality to replicate data set across uh, different data centers in a safe and efficient way. Um, provide uh, data replication, uh, metadata, and uh, rule management, and as well as uh, PID management, where PID is basically uh, the persistent identifier. So the users are able to, to replicate their own data and find again them uh, using the, the, the PID and the metadata associated to the, their own data. Um, the, B2, the B2Share instead is a web-based service for storing and publishing data sets for European scientists. The service utilizes other data uh, services for reliability and data retention. Um, a, basically is, uh, um, is um, deputed to store and publish data set, uh, also relying on trust repository uh, uh, with, uh, uh, in order to provide a, um, 
manage it and support the IT environment. Uh, the B2 stage uh, instead is a suite of services uh, uh, that they are used to, in order to transfer data and stage out the data on the UDAT resources and services. And uh, basically it relies on grid FTP with DAV and HTTP API. And while the B2 drop is a sync and share service uh, uh, that offer a collaborative way to work on documents and synchronize data across multiple devices. The B2 handle is the um, UDAT main persistent identifier service. Basically, is a service designed in order to, to contribute to data persistency. You work coupled with the B2 safe that I described before, and uh, it's used in order to provide the PID to be associated to data object um, for, uh, for a long period of time. Um, and uh, of course, this is a, a very important part uh, regarding long-term and data management. Uh, the B2 node instead is a service that allow you to easily and intuitively create annotation on research data hosted by the UDAT collaborative data infrastructure. Uh, the um, three uh, types of annotation are, are provided uh, for semantic, uh, um, it, um, coming from identified ontology repository, free text word, um, uh, to be used with, uh, when a specific term is not found in free text comment. Uh, the B2Note can be used coupled with uh, other services like B2Share and in general can be uh, added as a component uh, and, and included in other, uh, for example, web-based services. Uh, this is just uh, a, a panoramic, um, a graphical view of the main uh, uh, UDAT components and uh, EOSCAP data services interacting. The B2Note, for example, that it can be uh, use it for annotation, uh, interacting with the B2Share and uh, uh, B2Share and B2Safe uh, and, and B2Handle interacting together and uh, uh, integrated with AGI and Digo data services. Um, during the last year in 2019, the main effort was focused on solving the most important issue like uh, uh, integration of main B2 service as well as the GI service, including AI metadata management service, uh, improvement and of course maintenance of existing services, the improving of data transfer and assets among uh, different B2 service and the GI service, and of course improving documentation. Um, in general, uh, the use case uh, uh, we rely on when we, we think of data management and metadata management service uh, can be collected from my, mainly five sources. Uh, and uh, generally from thematic service, co competence centers, uh, communities, uh, uh, and uh, all the new communities entering in EOSC. Um, the, uh, this is very important for us in order to define use case and requirement for the service that we are going to implement and provide. Uh, some of these uh, um, uh, services and communities have been already described before, uh, but anyway, just uh, to, to give a brief panoramic, uh, we have, for example, uh, um, ECAS for, for, for climate data, but also Camp Biomed for uh, computational method for biomedical application, DARIA for arts and humanities, and so on. Um, this is a short summary of major achievement in 2019, last year. We, in particular, we provide a new version of the B2Find with enhanced data schema and, and the new graphical user interface, and the, as well as the integration with the AGI Data Hub. Uh, the B2 Stage and B2 Drop service have been upgraded, uh, including integration with the EOSCAP service and the B2 Access. Um, uh, of course, relying on out basic uh, standard authentication protocol, like uh, for example, OAuth2 or OpenID. Um, we move ahead the collaboration with OpenIRE and uh, uh, the B2Safe integration with B2Share, in including also the support to, to Python 3, migration to Python 3 for, for, for the client tool as well. And um, the, the improvement of the B2 node and in integration with the B2Share and OpenIRE and the integration with the, of the b 2 with the AGI Data Hub and the B2Share. Uh, improvement, general improvement uh, um, regards the also metadata and feed records manage, management and introduces support to Python 3. Thank you for your attention. Um, if you have asked a question, please ask. Hi, thank you, Michele. Um, do we have questions in the slide also that you could highlight for us, please? Uh, just one question at the moment uh, by Ellie. 
Ali, you can speak if you want. Yes, I, I have only uh, one question. This is, can you tell me more about uh, how many data sets there are in B2Drop? Uh, currently... Uh, Around, uh, not... Uh, uh um currently uh this is this is uh, uh, a point that i i i have no the the number here now so uh because basically regarding the metrics uh, we we provided the information for um mostly for the b2 safe uh, uh b2 share components that they, and we are still trying to define which metric to use in order to measure uh the data that have been uh, uh, new accounts and data that we we staged out. So for the for the B two drop, I have no specific information. I know that uh, uh, documents have been staged out, but well, it depends on the installation and the size that we are referring to. I don't know if uh, if John has more information than me on, on this with this regard, this respect. No, I don't. I would have asked maybe um, Heinrich if he has any uh, any number that he knows off offhand. But it's also sometimes um, yes. talk about data sets. Cool. Yeah, for Brito Drop, it's a little bit tricky. Maybe Sander is in the audience, he maybe can answer, but Brito Drop is you know, more, uh, yes, it's a, based on cloud, so it's for exchanging uh, documents. So there's a lot of exchange and deletion and then upload. So, but I don't know really at the moment. <laughs> maybe it's a more a question of the capacity of Brito Drop. Mm -hmm. So, or uh, Sanda, are you available? I Maybe hope. Johannes printed some comment uh, yeah. on the on the chat. And Ellie, ah. can, you, can you talk yes. about the underlying reason why you'd like to know this? Are you interested in how diverse it is, or what communities yeah. are using it, or just the the general usage? So, what's your underlying reason for asking? Uh, yes, it's all, not only uh, B2Drop, but also uh, B2Share, uh, I would like to know. Uh, because dance is, but uh, um, Olivier will tell you more about it later. Uh, dance has made a bridge to, uh, um, to uh, submit the data from B2Share in, uh, in uh, our uh, archive. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm, I'm just wondering how many yeah. objects so the, of data I have to the, think of. Yeah, yeah. yeah the point okay. is that, yes, Eric, please. Yeah, go ahead, Michele. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, I was, I was just saying that uh, um, uh, in general, the point is that uh, that is a, a distributed ecosystem. So you, you can have multiple installation of the same service, you know. So yeah. in order to, to provide such infor an information like statistic, uh, this is something that we are going, uh, that we already discussed also with John in the past, uh, mainly for the, for example, for the B2Safe and so on. Uh, you, we should previously defined what we would like to measure. And in general, this is not uh, completely an easy task because, uh, uh, for example, we have a discussion for the B2Safe uh, uh, and IROTH and regarding data and, and, and metadata. And uh, the point was that uh, for some metrics, it was not so easy because uh, we, we still need to decide if he, he, what we would like to measure. For example, you can have uh, uh, that you want to measure new, uh, new data that has been staged out or new accounts for users, but you need to understand in which period of time uh, in uh, following which policy and this may vary also from site to site because you can have as previously I say um, um, you can have data that are staging and stage out and the, the situation may change from one month to the other and this is valid also for user accounts uh, so for example you can have uh, in Chineca we have a special policy only for our data that you have uh, that uh, accounts that are not user for a certain amount of time may be removed and so for this reason, uh, you can have a different situation if you respect if you want to measure new data or new accounts, uh, for example, each month, or just to have a, 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 like a photo of the, like a screenshot of the actual situation. You have, you get different numbers, you know. So, mm -hmm. the, and you can have also different installation on m multiple sites of different service. For example, we have no B2Drop in Chineca, but this is just one of the, of the point. Anyway, um, so it depends. Uh, 
The it depends. In Chineka, for example, we... how, how we actually look at using the DAN service as well. If it's um, in DANs are one of the proof of concepts for the long term storage services as well. So you maybe not all data would go into that. Yeah, exactly. For example, for the B2 safe in Chineka and IROTS, for only for the data, we can say we have uh, 50, 60 terabyte of data from uh, different communities uh, we have uh, different data resources that are managed with our policies mm -hmm. and our data structure and in our user base and we have matrix uh, provided using for example access search or kibana and we we provide uh, data resources spot for for example lens or florence or other communities but this is just something for us so we are still defining how to measure this kind of information so I'd say, Ellie, if we can take this up offline, that'd be nice so we understand, you know, exactly what the, the usage case is behind you. So it, it, it is a question where I, I understand where you're coming from, but we'd have to talk to you and it, it, address this it depends aspect so we could understand. But, um, okay, you're in the project, let's talk and let's see about how we use that. Is that okay for you? Yes, yes, we can talk about it another time. Yes, it's okay. Yes, thank okay. you very much. Okay. No worries. And um, regarding Sean's question, I guess we have a, a suite of sites which do have um, certification, etc. If you're talking about the, the deeper certification, um, then maybe you want to wait until after the talk from Olivier. So the, there's where we talk about the ETDRs, so the, the sites which really do have ISO standard certification and are the stronger ones. Uh, okay, that's fine. I can wait until okay? after Olivier. Yep. Yeah, I think he's no the guy really to address this as well, if you're talking, especially when we get into, as I said, the, the, the deeper certification where we really have ISO standard sites, which are certified long term, will hold your data for decades, then Olivier is the guy to talk to and probably after his talk, which comes next anyway. So, Okay, thank you for the questions. So um, moving on to the, the last part of the session. So again, we're, we're grouping thematic talks. These are two services which are, are being provided, or to data services specifically. Um, Olivier will talk to us about the long-term data preservation. And um, then we had Abdul Rahman to talk about the services for sensitive data. It seems that Abdul Rahman can't actually make his talk. So I will do my best to walk us through his slides. There's a lot of detail in there for you to go and look at after. So I can give you the flavor of this and then more detailed things than you're gonna have to ask, ask offline. I'm sorry about that. But um, at least we can expose this to you and give you a, a broader understanding. So if we can first start with um, Olivier about the, the data yep. preservation services. Can you see my screen? Yes, it's fine. Thank you. And you can hear me okay. Great. All right. So you've heard about um, services bound to data just, just before my presentation. Um, this will not be really different. Um, I will describe now a long-term preservation service which um, is provided to ensure that the, the digital assets remain fair. So you've heard of fair. The main difference with long-term preservation is the time dimension. Um, it's a, a service that's intended uh, to be provided over years and when I'm saying years that's decades. Decades means 40, 50, 60 years, there's no limitation in, in, in duration really. So um, because of this time dimension, um, these services are rather special and they have to include capacity and resource planning and long-term preservation techniques and, and technologies. And that's what I'm going to describe right now. So, um, but they also combine uh, uh, policies, uh, processes uh, uh, around uh, quality insurance, essentially, um, to ensure that this um, uh, natively uh, digital or, or converted data remains uh, uh, accessible, findable, uh, reusable, and regardless uh, about, uh, regardless of the uh, challenge challenges of uh, uh, technical technological changes that are to come, of course, because we cannot say what storage is going to look like in 50 years. We cannot say what file formats will going to look like in, in 50 years. So these are risks, and we have put together some action plans to mitigate their, their risks when they occur. So um, th th those long-term preservation services are uh, provided by two um, data centers as part of Yosker, CNES 
um, which I work for is one of them. And the other one is dance. And you've heard uh, Ellie uh, just before I started my presentation. So um, long-term preservation is not that straightforward, especially for our scientists. And we thought it would be a good idea to integrate some already existing tools in EOSCOP, in UDAT, in order to facilitate the, the, the work for, for researchers to deposit their data into uh, long-term preservation platforms. Um, the, the acronym for long-term preservation services or platform is ETDR in, in EOSCOP. ETDR standing for uh, European Trusted Digital Repository. Um, so in order to, to facilitate that, that work, we thought it would be smart to integrate uh, B2Find, B2Safe, and B2Share in order to uh, ease the, 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 um, the, the ingest process. So this is what we've done uh, at CINES. So basically, we rely on B2Safe and B2Find, um, B2Safe in order to um, allow uh, data transfer on to our our facilities. Um, once the, the data is transferred, we will perform some quality checks. So basically, we will we'll, um, validate the formats, uh, generate and compare the checksums, check for antiviruses. Um, and then we will do some post potential post processing. Um, in Enrich's speech earlier, you've heard about the AlbaDrop pilot. So the AlbaDrop pilot was done at CINES. Um, and um, uh, in addition to the B2Safe and B2Find uh, uh, services which have been used, we've used those also some HPC services in order to extract some information and metadata out of the, the uh, packages that were sent by, by the museums. Um, and we used our, 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 our HPC uh, cluster in order to do that. Um, then we will index all, all the, the information and make it available for harvesting through B2Find. So it will be um, uh, um, findable through uh, B2Find portal or the, the internal portal that we have developed. And in addition to that, we will send the, the, the packages on our, our long-term preservation platform where it will be uh, stored for years and even, uh, eventually converted if uh, there are any risks of file format obsolescence or metadata obsolescence and things like that. So this is something that's been running for a, a year or so and on which we, we did the AlbaDrop pilot. In the meantime, um, DANCE uh, um, implemented a, a proof of concept in order to uh, provide another interface in addition to the B2Safe that we provide in the CNS ETDR and they uh, chose uh, B2Share um, and, and tried to implement um, a, an interface between B2Share and their um, uh, data vault, which is their, their uh, long-term preservation platform. So that was part of the POC, which has been successfully um, uh, executed uh, last summer. Uh, the, the, um, the changes made to the uh, B2Share code are available in GitHub, and you've got the link. Uh, here. So potentially that would be a second instance of the ETDR. So the, the major uh, uh, things that we have achieved over the, the, the last year is um, that, well, the, the ETDR instance at CNES is now part of the EOSCRAP catalog. So it made it to the marketplace, you put the link here. Um, and we also completed the B2Share integration uh, in, in CNES and the B2Share integration uh, in DANCE. So what other uh, announcements could we do to the existing uh, pl uh, platforms? Um, at CNES, one of the, our objectives is, is to also to add B2Share in, in the panel of tools available to, to deposit data um, that could be uh, for the long term, but that could be also for the, the medium term. So that, that would be a, 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 a second kind of, of service, uh, a little bit different from um, the long term that we provide at the moment. Um, at DANCE, the, the potential uh, things to come are, um, well, it, it's, it's about strategy. Um, B2Share is about to be upgraded to Invino 3. Uh, at least the B2Share instance that's run at 
Sef Sara. Sef Sara is the partner of dance in, in the in the POC that, that we uh, did um, uh, last summer. Um, and this upgrade to Ingenio 3 has a side effect um, because the, the SWORD 2 service that they implemented should be upgraded to SWORD 3. Um, so this has, of course, an impact on a, a, a possible uh, deployment in, in production, and that's what's being discussed at the moment. Um, another thing is that, that we got uh, on the radar um, here is a Oh, here, sorry. So, um, Sean, I'm supposed you're happy. You can see the Cortrus seal logo. Um, so, one of the things that we have uh, in plan is to test the uh, new version of the Cortrus seal. CINES um, uh, have been credited with the, um, the data, data seal of approval, which is the, 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 the previous instance of the, the Cortrus seal. Cortrus seal is being um, revamped as we speak because um, it will try to map the 16 uh, criteria of the core trust seal with the 15 recommendation of the FAIR principles and this will lead into um, a, a revised uh, certification process and um, we will try to uh, test that as part of a, a memorandum of understanding that, that we have between EOSCAD and FAIR's FAIR. Right, that's me done. So um, I suppose that we will have a few questions after the, um, the talk. Okay, thank you, Olivia. I'm going to do my best to do the presentation from Abdul Rahman here and now, and then then we can move on with the, the questions. I can share my screen. Where are we? Let me see if this is the right one. No, I'm sharing the wrong one. The questions, presentation from, sorry people. Let me remove this. Okay, can you, can you currently see what I'm sharing? Is it the, the talk from sensitive data services? No, we see a black screen. Black's bad. Yes. Right. Well, Maybe you have to press on sharing or tiling. <laughs> I have to go, sorry, again to try to get this to come up. Where's my Zoom session? Okay, stop sharing. Okay, right, I'm gonna give it another try and then we'll see where we're at. Otherwise I can ask. Okay, can you see this? Yes. Yes. I don't know if I can, no, it's wobbly. That's broken. Okay, give me a second. It's quite good now. Yeah, but it, the, it's, I think it was zoomed in and so from my screen it looked okay. um, terrible. For want of a better word. Right. Okay, now, can you see the yes, but yes, presentation? Yes, presentation mode, yes. It's not in presentation mode, but uh, we can see it. I can move to presentation mode. New slide, insert view. Is it still good? No, it's black now. <laughs> Wait a second, and now? Yeah. 
it's maybe different in the window. Let's show it this, uh, show it like this. If you have windows, you have maybe a different window. No, I don't have windows. No. I'm maybe struggling to make it because I think it's because I'm sharing through the browser. So I, I'll see if I've got a downloaded. Let's show it like this. Stop sharing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, if, okay, we can go through it anyway. This is the best I can do, I think, at the moment. Sorry, really apologize. Um, so, uh, as I said, Abdul Rahman can't make this session properly, but um, what I want to talk about is the sensitive data services. So, as I said, it's a it's a specific aspect of services that is provided through EOSC. It's in the marketplace. You can go and use it. And there's a few use cases which are covered here. And this is what what I'd like to focus on mainly. So. Um, Firstly, the, there's a service called ePuta, which is a secure cloud service from CSC. And this provides in general, this is an infrastructure as a service. So as I said, that we've got different use cases which are covered here. ePuta is providing infrastructure as a service, so you can actually create your infrastructure within a secure environment. You can access that infrastructure from externally and you can manage services within there. You can actually manage your VMs, etc. And um, it's, it's good to highlight that there are web user interfaces and there's clients to actually access this and manage it. Um, if you can see the screen now, the ePuta data access is um, um, via secure from your site. So there's a secure, secure tunnel across to the ePuta infrastructure when you actually create your infrastructure. And you can also, at the bottom here, you can also see that you can administer this infrastructure as well from external. So you can actually gain access to these services which you create and the VMs you create and administer them. So this is one of the core use cases, creating the infrastructure, managing your data within this infrastructure and gaining access to it. Um, the service itself, as I've said, is provided by CSC. You can apply through the EOS Hub, through the portal, through the marketplace to gain access to this service. You can set up your own networks. You can establish the connection to these networks or gaining access to the services you've got set up inside this secure cloud infrastructure. And there's a nice link to more information here. So this is where you should turn if you have this as a use case. Alternately, the University of Oslo offers the TSD, which is a, a also a sensitive data service, but this is more software as a, as a service. So TSD in a nutshell, this is a nice slide which shows that um, you gain two-factor authentication to the services which are internal within the TSD service. You can actually build upon these and do analysis on these services using the data which is stored inside the TSD service. So the data should stay internally. Um, the next slide shows um, just the, the building out and if you, if you can see okay here, that um, you get two-factor authentication into that, but then you can have multiple machines, et cetera, set in on the back end. It's nice to see that there is a rapid growth and uptake in this service. So you can really see that um, through the years, we, we see these jumps, you see this um, uptake, you can see there's lots of researchers using it and communities using it, which is very nice to see and a lot of data. I mean, two petabytes of sensitive data is also a lot of data. Value added on top of this, um, for the TSD service, the, the web forms for online questionnaires and secure data collection, now that's obviously for many communities very important. There's APIs and also that allow you to gain access from your smartphones, et cetera, when you're defining apps, which also, again, many communities really appreciate this. And it's, all, it's not just providing the, the end service and the infrastructure, but really providing a suite of services which makes people's lives easier to manage and to provide these services, secure data services. There's work done on um, gaining secure container infrastructures, a cluster of containers. So this slide addresses that. And then one thing I did want to highlight here is this TSD, the content system, consent system, sorry. So when people actually make this data available, then we need a system, or the, there's a need for a system which handles the consent. So people actually can actually say, you can gain access to this data, you can use this data, but it's very important as well that this can be revoked and managed. And so the TSD system offers this as well. So the, the suite of services takes a, a lot of the weight off the researchers when they're managing their secure data. 
And so that's nice as well to see that these, these services are fought out and effectively end to end providing the systems and the services which are needed. So this is a, this, uh, an overview of the design of the content portal. So the major thing is that you see that there's a portal and underneath, which is the portal to the outside world and then underneath on the TSE world, actually the management of this data and the access to this data. You can query for this content, so you can actually ask to be given content to certain data sets, which obviously also is a very nice feature. So a brief summary, it's um, platform and software as a service. And so that, this is nice also. Um, we take care of you. As I said, they, they provide a suite of services which actually take care of your needs. And it takes a lot of the weight off the people doing the research and actually then says, we'll manage the secure stuff for you. We'll provide the services you need, not just the infrastructure. And I think that's very nice as well. Um, it also gives access to the, the back end, to the, to the large um, HPC systems, et cetera, which, is, which I think is very nice as well. Um, the content system we've mentioned, the anonymization of data structures is also there as well. We'll mention that a little more later on. You can gain access to this via the portal as usual. I think portal, portal, go for the marketplace, always people. And um, you can apply for projects. There's a nice slide here with an overview of how to apply for projects, what you need to do. And please, if you have questions, take a look in there and go through this. Um, again, the last slide, gaining access to it um, through the portal directly. And there's something about prices. Um, one thing I did mention at the start is these are, are services on the back end. They're, they're, they've grown out, they're, they're quite multifaceted, but also there's the, the integration with the EOS hub. And um, there's a, a few aspects here which are well worth mentioning. So one is the work with the, the B2Share service. So B2Share is actually a generic service within um, the EOS hub. It's well used, well established, it's well understood by the researchers, and it's a nice thing that they actually can use this service and there's been work put in place to ensure that the sensitive data services are available via the B2Share service. So what this has meant if we move down to the next slide is that we need a secure B2Share service. And so there's been work put in place to actually ensure we have a secure B2Share service that then you can use and we can use a B2Find service to look for sensitive data. Now, obviously this is more difficult than the standard way of actually finding data, et cetera, because even placing um, the names of the data sets, et cetera, could expose some information about the internal data. So this is something, and assigning um, PIDs to the data, et cetera, is something where we're looking at and evaluating and we're making progress upon, but it's obviously something that we have to be extremely careful about and to ensure there's no leakage of any information from the secure data out into the outside world, even in the forms of URLs, names of data sets maybe, and the PIDs. So this is our work in progress. One of the main aspects around this is, as we said, on the left-hand side here, you see the users and you see the, the standard services which are used to being exposed within the EOS Hub. So B2Find, B2Share, these are the services that the users know and trust and have seen, can manage, can use. And it's nice that we can expose the back-end services no matter how varied they are via these services. And it's, this is where we're putting effort now to actually see how far we can evolve this. As I said, it's normally quite a lot harder than the standard services when we have to be more careful here. There's a lot actually of work being considered with how we manage the, the secure containers. So obviously the container services themselves, we, we have to be extremely careful how these containers are formed, how secure they are. Each time there's updates, we need to go through again, looking at security mm -hmm. aspects with them. So there's been a lot of actual work done in this aspect and um, progress is being made. We're doing very well though, I think it's nice. Um, one nice thing to mention as well is the amnesia link to the open air project. So that's the anonymization tool. So this is um, again, because you can't give out data and you need to anonymize it before it's actually passed out for the communities or before it's been given out to the projects. So this is a nice cross link to other projects to actually say we can work with open air to expose this data, but also to look at their tools for our exposing this. So if we have the data in-house or we have the data within the project, we can actually work with our projects. And this is a nice thing as well to do this, this cross project work. And that's something we've actually worked upon quite a lot to make sure we, we are focusing on that to understand we're not uh, a data silo. We're not a standalone project. So 
in summary, using personal data for research purposes poses a challenge for infrastructures. I mean, this is very obvious, but we can work on solving this. So CSC and UIO through the ePUTA and TST services are looking at two slightly different approaches of doing this, but it's nice to be able to cover these two different use cases. It's also very important for us to say that these are long lived and solid services where a lot of effort has gone into actually ensuring that they are secure and we're exposing them now increasingly via other services and via um, EOS hub mechanisms as well. So we're looking at the integration of that, taking up these long lived services which we trust and exposing them as well. They are in the catalogue, they are available. Um, other Nordic activities I would like to not go into because I'm not the, the, the person with the real know-how here. Um, I apologise that we, we skimmed over this. I hope you got a flavour of what's happening here and the fact that different use cases are being addressed by different services and we are looking at cross-project work as well, looking at other projects within Europe to actually see how we expose this data and we are ensuring that um, these services can be brought out and be made part of the EOSC infrastructure. And one thing I've stressed before about this integration activities, and we see it again and again, is once these services are made available within EOSC, we can actually work on integrating them with other services and we can gain added value through that. And um, this is something which has been one of the core aspects that we focused upon throughout this project, ensuring that we have off the shelf and stable services but ensuring that we have this data integration and these services which can be exposed and linked together. Okay, that is I think as best as I can do. Um, there's a rich set of slides, please go through them and if you have any questions then um, we're willing to take them up now. Okay, so it seems the at least in the Slido, the only question was already covered. So, Sean, are you happy with the the response from Olivier that you understand that we are well plugged into the core trust seal, and we do have certified sites? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, are there other questions? Okay. Then just to wrap up. Okay, so I can steal the screen sharing, I hope. And if I can. John, are you still there? Sorry, it is just me that I cannot no. hear. John? So I can't hear John either. Ah. He is, his microphone is on. Yeah. John? Maybe let me write this. The chat. Uh, John, we cannot hear you. Well, 
So in the meantime, I'll do some <laughs> housekeeping. So, and so for tomorrow, uh, so tomorrow I, I'm going to paste in the chat the link to the agenda. On the agenda, you find the new links uh, for tomorrow to join the last day of the USCAB week. And uh, like today, tomorrow we start again at 10 a.m. and we start already with the breakout sessions. So make sure, as usual, that you join 10 minutes before the start of the meeting. In any case, I will send you an email like I did yesterday with the, the details about the links. John, give us a sign. He went out and now he's uh, admitted again, so maybe... Okay, so he's trying to reconnect. Yes, uh, let me echo. I see that he's joining. Let me see. Anybody else from the speakers wants to say something <laughs> in the meantime? Yes, it's kind of. Maybe <laughs> the John is coming. Uh, yeah, I want only to stress it, my name is already said. So, uh, so, so, coming soon. This is just uh, the subject. So, the big challenge is, of course, so we can integrate a lot of these great services together and we make uh, uh, great uh, things. Actually, Irish, uh, you have a lot of background noise, so it's difficult to understand what you're saying. John, can yeah. you hear us? Well, uh, I suggest that we close the session because I don't think that John is able to come back. Yeah, I'm here. If you can hear oh, me. Oh, great! I, now I, we can... I'm fighting against Zoom, but it's all my fault, I think. So, okay, go ahead. So, um, I, I don't know if I, I'll, I'll try to share a screen again and see if I can manage this to just to just wrap up. But yeah. um, I mean, the main thing is I I, I think it's. I just want to say thank you for people for attending so it's it's really important to us that we actually get contact to the communities and the people out there that can use these services and it's, it's good to have the feedback and so the, getting the questions and always contact us always come with questions i think two of the major aspects that we've come across is that we're providing off-the-shelf services so you've seen services today you can get them through the marketplace please go to the marketplace everything's available for you there. there's information about these services how to gain access to them how to gain support for them also the documentation etc and then we can use them but then secondary to this is also come to us and talk to us about integration activities we've done that throughout the project and even after the eos Hub project ends this year there's still going to be this focus on us wanting to address community needs and these integration activities as services are built into the EOSC, we really look at this and we look at these added value situations where we can actually understand that obviously certain services are linked together and we can actually provide much more value if we actually start doing that. We're doing it, we want to in increase upon that. So please come and talk to us about the use, use cases that you have. And I think that wraps up for now. And um, also thank you to the speakers and thank you to Trust IT for supporting us through this. I think it's been <laughs> difficult at times, but it's very, very nice. And I think we've, it's been a very nice conference experience to be able to do this online and it's changed so much. So thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks uh, to you. So while you were away, uh, I was just saying that I pasted in the chat the link to the agenda for tomorrow. We start at 10 a.m. again, and there are the new links uh, to connect to the sessions. So. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a nice evening. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Have a nice evening, people. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.